Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, November 16th, 2020. I pray that as we spend this time together in God's word, God will use his word to strengthen our faith in him and increase our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our savior. Today we begin by reading Psalm 54. God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. God, hear my prayer. Listen to the words from my mouth. For strangers rise up against me and violent men intend to kill me. They do not let God guide them. God is my helper. The Lord is the sustainer of my life. He will repay my adversaries for their evil. Because of your faithfulness, annihilate them. I will sacrifice a free will offering to you. I will praise your name, Lord, because it is good. For he has rescued me from every trouble, and my eye has looked down on my enemies. Our Old Testament reading continues with, uh, continues with the message of hope that God gave to his people through Jeremiah that we began to hear yesterday. Today we're going to hear about the new covenant that God plans to make with his people. A covenant that will be a covenant based on the forgiveness of sins that will be accomplished through the promised Messiah. At that time, this is the Lord's declaration. I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who survived the sword found favor in the wilderness. When Israel went to find rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued to extend faithful love to you. Again, I will build you so that you will be rebuilt, virgin Israel. You will take up your tambourines again and go out in joyful dancing. You will plant vineyards again on the mountains of Samaria. The planters will plant and will enjoy the fruit. For there will be a day when watchmen will call out in the hill country of Ephraim, Come, let's go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. For this is what the Lord says, Sing with joy for Jacob, shout for the foremost of the nations, proclaim, praise, and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Watch, I am going to bring them from the northern land. I will gather them from remote regions of the earth. The blind and the lame will be with them, along with those who are pregnant and those about to give birth. They will return here as a great assembly. They will come weeping, but I will bring them back with consolation. I will lead them to wadis filled with water by a smooth way where they will not stumble. For I am Israel's father, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Nations, hear the word of the Lord and tell it among the far-off coasts and islands. Say, the one who scattered Israel will gather him. He will watch over him as a shepherd guards his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and redeemed him from the power of one stronger than he. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will be radiant with joy because of the Lord's goodness, because of the grain, the new wine, the fresh oil, and because of the young of the flocks and herds. Their life will be like an irrigated garden. They will no longer grow weak from hunger. Then the young men will rejoice with dancing while young and old men rejoice together. I will turn their mourning into joy, give them consolation, and bring happiness out of grief. I will refresh the priests with an abundance and my people will be satisfied with my goodness. This is the Lord's declaration. This is what the Lord says. A voice was heard in Ramah, a, la a lament with bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. This is what the Lord says. Keep your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for the reward for your work will come. This is the Lord's declaration. And your children will return from the enemy's land. There is hope for your future. This is the Lord's declaration, and your children will return to their own territory. I have surely heard Ephraim moaning. You disciplined me, and I have been disciplined like an untrained calf. Take me back so that I can return, for you, Lord, are my God. 
After my return, I felt regret. After I was instructed, I struck my thigh in grief. I was ashamed and humiliated because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Isn't Ephraim a precious son to me, a delightful child? Whenever I speak against him, I certainly still think about him. Therefore, my inner being yearns for him. I will truly have compassion on him. This is the Lord's declaration. Set up road markers for yourself. Establish signposts. Keep the highway in mind, the way you tra have traveled. Return, virgin Israel. Return to these cities of yours. How long will you turn here and there, faithless daughter? For the Lord creates something new in the land. A female will shelter a man. This is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says. When I restore their fortunes, they will once again speak this word in the land of Judah and in its cities. May the Lord bless you, righteous settlement, holy mountain. Judah and all its cities will live in it together, also farmers and those who move with the flocks. For I satisfy the thirsty person and feed all those who are weak. At this I awoke and look around. My sleep had been most pleasant to me. Look, the days are coming. This is the Lord's declaration. When I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of people and the seed of animals, just as I watched over them to uproot and to tear them down, to demolish and to destroy and to cause disaster, so will I watch over them to build and to plant them. This is the Lord's declaration. In those days, it will never again be said, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Rather, each will die for his own iniquity. Anyone who eats sour grapes, his own teeth will be set on edge. Look, the days are coming. This is the Lord's declaration. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This one will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, even though I am their master, the Lord's declaration. Instead, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, the Lord's declaration. I will put my teaching within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will one teach his neighbor or his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least to the greatest of them. This is the Lord's declaration. For I will forgive their iniquity and never again remember their sin. After the trial before the Sanhedrin had concluded, the officials took Jesus to the Roman governor, Pilate. While that was all happening, Judas, convinced that there was no forgiveness for what he had done, tragically committed suicide. When daybreak came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. After tying him up, they led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, was full of remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood, he said. What's that to us, they said. See to it yourself. So he threw the silver into the temple and departed. Then he went and hanged himself. The chief priests took the silver and said, it's not permitted to put it into the temple sanctuary since it is blood money. They conferred together and bought the potter's field with it as a burial place for foreigners. Therefore, that field has been called field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him whose price was set by the Israelites, and they gave them for the, for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Judas tragically despaired. Jesus would have had far more reason to despair as he hung on the cross because God had truly abandoned him. And yet, as we're going to hear in our theological writing today from the pen of Francis Pieper, Jesus did not despair. 
but for our salvation, maintained his perfect faith in his heavenly father, even as he was suffering the agonies of hell on our behalf. It would, however, be wholly improper to speak of despair on the part of Christ. Despair is iniquity and would conflict with the sinlessness of Christ, which is attested by scripture. Besides, scripture expressly bears witness that Christ, while forsaken of God, continued to trust in God. While he was forsaken of God, he still cried to God as his God, saying, my God, my God. Gerhard writes of this, other men cannot, without sinning, feel the wrath of God deserved by their sins because of the utter corruption of their nature. For secretly in their hearts, they become impatient. And at times they also murmur against God in words as the examples of Job and Jeremiah testify. But Christ bears these tortures without any sin, persists in holy obedience to God, and retains filial trust in his heart. For these are by no means the words of one despairing when he exclaims, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But they are the words of one giving notice that he is enduring extreme agony of the soul and pains which are truly of hell. And so Christ, by wrestling with the power of the devil, with the horror of death, and with the agonies of the damned, brought back from them a glorious triumph for our salvation. Furthermore, it must not be forgotten that while Christ was forsaken of God, the Father's declaration still was true. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. By the very fact that Christ took upon himself in the place of sinful mankind, this extreme punishment of being forsaken of God and so fulfilled his father's will. He remained the object of God's supreme love, even while he was under his wrath. Just as he says, therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Upon the Cross Extended. I caused your grief and sighing by evils multiplying as countless as the sands. I caused the woes unnumbered with which your soul is cumbered, your sorrows raised by wicked hands. And we pray. Almighty everlasting God, through your only Son, our blessed Lord, you commanded us to love your enemy, love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. Therefore, we earnestly implore you that by your gracious working, our enemies may be led to true repentance, may have the same love toward us as we have toward them, and may be of one accord and of one mind and heart with us and with your whole church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you again for spending this time with us in God's word today. God richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.